All right, so you want to perform some OSINT or open source investigation on an IP address, a domain, or a URL. Well, this video is going to show you three sources that you can utilize in order to do that. And these sources are my personal favorite. We're going to go through each one step by step, how to use it and how to find it. These are all open and available to the public and they are free. I also am not affiliated with them and this is not sponsored. So without further ado, let's begin. All right, so let's first look at Abuse IPDB. And it's this first one here. And I have an IP address for us to check. This is an open DNS IP address. All right, and it gives us things like the ISP. So of course this is Cisco open DNS. All right, so we see the ISP, we see the usage type and the host names associated with it, as well as a location. So this IP address is associated with San Francisco, California in USA. And then at the bottom, it will tell you if there are reports for this associated IP address. So if you have any doubts about an IP address, you can come to this website and see a lot of information on it. Sometimes it will even tell you the associated subnet range for that IP address. All right, and next up we have urlscan.io. Now this is for if you are not really certain about a URL, if you think it could be malicious, or if you have any doubts, you can come here. And if you are interested in a little bit of the backstory of the URL. So for this, I want to use a URL that has some redirects. So let's see if we can find that. I'm just going to go to cyberseek.org and it's scanning it. And one small thing that I glossed over here, you can do a public scan or a private scan. So as you see, you have submitted a URL as a public scan, which means that the results of the scan will be visible to other users of urlscan.o. So if you would like to do a private scan instead, if you would like to hide the URL, then we can do that as well. So this is CyberSeek. URL scan provides us a screenshot of the URL as well as the associated IP address. We see it's, what is that, France? If I'm wrong, roast me in the comments. All right, and then the associated IPs as well, the IPv6 ranges, the IP details, domains, right? So we have a lot of information on this URL just from this URL scan website. And we even have the certs, which is incredibly important too, to give us a little bit more information on the validity of a website. We can check the certs and frames, detected technologies, redirects can be found here, any indicators. This is a term security industry uses to describe indicators such as IP, domain, and hashes. This does not imply that any of these in indicate malicious activity. All right, so we could study that if we need it, as well as behavior. So here we have associated cookies as well as security headers. All right, now we'll head over to alienvault.com. And this, we can actually scan multiple things here as well, like domains and IP addresses. We're going to go ahead and scan the IP address that we scanned using Abuse IPDB. Now after it loads here, we should get similar information to Abuse IPDB. But I am showing this because it is important for us to get multiple sources of information in order to get the most accurate information, right? So if we get the same information from three different sources, that means that information is likely true. Now if we use these same three resources and two of the three say the same thing, then we can lean on the fact that those two of the three resources are likely true. Not found. Interesting. Okay, instead we'll scan 
the Google DNS. That was a little weird, but all right. And here we have pulses, which usually that is the indicators. And typically if something has more pulses, that is a bad thing. Then passive DNS, URLs, and files all associated with this IP address. We have a verdict of suspicious. <laughs> this is DNS.Google, so we know for a fact that it's not potentially malicious, hopefully. All right, uh, we have the location again, as we saw in abuse IPDB. We have the associated ASN, and then the indicator factors here. And then we can scroll down to the passive DNS list, as well as associated URLs, files, Oh, that's fun. Droppers, Emotet, nice. And then the HTTP scans. Now these three websites can be used to give you a plethora of information you can use in order to determine the validity of some type of activity that you're monitoring, right? If you see an IP address or a domain or URL that you're not familiar with, you can use these resources here. And yes, there's plenty of other resources, but these are three that I really like. For example, Abuse IPDB, you could use Virus Total instead, but from my experience, Abuse IPDB has given me much more data to go off of. I hope this has been of value to you. Subscribe for more cybersecurity, and thanks for watching.